Here we are again with another Brood War ladder battle. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Rain versus Yuck is our matchup for today. I want to just take another look at Rain because he had a bit of a hard time going up against Terran in our last video. This one is from the series is from October the 9th of 2024. Yuck. I've been featuring him him on the channel quite a bit recently he's one of the few zerg players in a, a, at a high level who's laddering quite a bit and so we have a lot more replays on him than most other zerg players and that's why we're getting a lot of games out of him and he's been performing quite well we saw him versus flash in the past we saw him uh, in quite a few different videos and now we're gonna get to see his performance here against Rain. One thing to mention: look, we're on um, Minstrel right now, and this is something I've noticed: is placing the spawning pool here will make it so that if you have to transfer your drones to your natural and then, or transfer there and back, or you have to transfer from the natural to the main, your drones coming from the natural will path behind the mineral patches. And then they'll have to come back around here to re return a mineral before going back to regular mining. Something that I noticed, and I've been trying to avoid placing my spawning pool here, especially with uh, the build that's being done uh, by Hyuk in this game. There's no real reason to have the spawning pool in this position. It's not like we're going to have an early zealot come in before we have Ling's out or anything. Forge into Nexus. That probe was killed behind the mineral patch. Very nice uh, control out of Yuck there. But uh, now we're just going to throw down a cannon back at home. Be safe. Rain is going to send another probe out on the map. And he won't go for double cannon. He's not too afraid of a bunch of links coming across the map here just yet. And in fact, we're not even going to produce links as Hyuk until throwing, we throw down that third hatchery. So drops the third hatch. Now he can start to produce lings. He sees the with the overlord, the forge. So he may even just stop at only one pair. And yeah, he will just stop now. So this is uh, something I've, I've noticed. I'm surprised to see Hyuk place this spawning pool here. You can place it one hex over and the drones can come through here, although some of them might go behind still. So I like to place it down over like down in this position or just place it somewhere out over here. And that way it's out of the way. Doesn't screw up my transfers and uh, the mining time will not be lost if indeed we have to rotate drones around between the main and the natural. Starting the layer in the natural, he wants to try and hide the fact that he's going for this layer. Seeing the gas still mining is a pretty big tell that there's probably a layer somewhere out there. Uh, considering there's two locations to place it and a third one about to come up. It's not outside of the realm of possibility that there's a layer somewhere else out here. But you'd love to be able to confirm that layer because we could be hydra busting. And he doesn't get down that ramp. That's huge. Very nice control there by Hyuk and a bit of a mistake by Rain. Not able to scout means he's not going to know about this spire coming up and he may assume that there's some sort of bust. He's sending a zealot across the map and that may just scout the natural. In fact, it probably will with the, the lings kind of out of position right now. This zealot should be able to make his way into the natural, scout the lair. And maybe even see the spire over here as well. Four lings in the natural is enough to stop the zealot. But oh, will he stop it from getting in? Nice block there. Preventing that zealot from running by into the main base is very good. Really gotta pull these gotta pull these drones really, really fast as soon as they start to get attacked. Sometimes the range on those zealots is insane. Finishes up that speed. Oh, a little bit of a mistake there from Hyuk. He will eventually gun this down though. There we go beating away at that zealot's back as it tries to run into the mineral line and Yuck is going to be able to stabilize with plenty of drones popping out right now 
His spire is on the way, just about done as the first Corsair comes out. So everything looking pretty smooth here for Hyuk. Smooth sailing for now. No Zealots out on the map either, and the Lings are in the front. This is the comfortable position that you like to be in as Zerg. You can start to throw down extra macro hatcheries. We'll get the Hydra Den. Evo Chamber is going to be coming up here in a moment. Mixing in those drones. A couple of Scourge are going to pop out. Defending with Scourge against Corsair is so much more calm than defending with Hydra. You don't have to be running around, you know, trying to save overlords that are popping out in specific areas. Like this overlord could be really hard to save uh, if you only had Hydras on defense. But with the Scourge now, going to be able to keep that alive. No problem. Four Scourge going to go chase these Corsairs across the map. And doesn't fully need to control this. He's going to try to catch that Corsair if he can. But... The more important thing here is getting ready for the next phase of the game. Ooh, that was really close. Corsair is doing some good juking and jiving here. It may actually be able to get back home. It's really close to a catch. Oh my goodness, what even was that? I swear I saw two Scourge fly through that Corsair. It somehow managed to dodge through everything and make its way back home, so... Keeping both those Corsairs alive is very important. He's gone up to four now. He's going to hit that critical mass quite quickly. Probe is tweaking out in the back. Looks like it does uh, stabilize. And now a DT heading over here towards the third base. Overlord speed is on the way, but it's not done yet. Will this DT be able to get in? No is pushed back. No mutas being produced here for Hyak. Just a nice easy transition into Hydras is coming. Corsairs making their way towards this natural. They're not going to find anything though with this number of Hydras waiting. Yeah, not even going to trade off one Overlord from this position. Scourge are still available too. They could flank. When these uh, Corsairs come in, he's tempting to dive on one of these Overlords, but with uh, three total and Overlord speed done, it's not a high value proposition trying to dive in and, and fight that. Good job keeping the Corsairs alive and sniping down those Scourge, but I'm really liking Hyuk's spot right now. He's done everything he wants to do. Everything he needs is on the way. We have Lurker. We have a plus one just about to finish. Drop is coming. Ah, there we go. Yuck, gonna throw a curveball in this match. So far, he's played everything absolutely standard. But he's gonna try and pull a fast one on Rain. Rain is gonna see everything that's going on and think, wow, you're just playing completely standard. We can have a nice civil macro game, but... Such is not the case. Hyuk is about to pull out something nasty. He's going to try to take a base out here in the front. Now, that's not going to last long because these Zealots can definitely force a cancel on this. Before the Hydras can even get down here, that will have to be canceled. Likely, we'll see him take this base over here now. Oh, he's actually going to come back down and retake this. Hmm. It's an interesting choice. Two Overlords were lost in the bottom right. And so... Some of those are going to have to be replaced before Lurkers can be made. He's making two right now, but he's completely supply blocked. And Lurker upgrade is about to finish. That's never a good feeling. You always want to have some open supply as the Lurker upgrade finishes. Because sometimes those timings can really screw you over. You just don't have Lurkers finish quite in time when the push is coming. It's not the case this game. He should be okay. And as Overlord's finish, he's going to start some Lurker Eggs. Trying to get a view of where this army is headed. Does catch the DT out on the map. Finds and finishes that off. Only one kill. Okay, three kills on this one Corsair. He's managed to pick off a few 
overlords, I guess. Most of those were probably the ones down here in the bottom left, but... Yuck's done a good job of keeping his overlords alive for the most part in this game. I'm shocked to see him try to take this base. I think he wants to draw rain to this area. He wants rain to push through the bottom side so he can drop the main. I think that's what we're going to see. Oh boy. He picks up two lurkers and wants to go for a drop in the main, but it's spotted by chance with Rain's roaming Corsair army. And now that he knows there, there's drop available, he's going to start to play a lot different. He's going to be more aware of where these overlords are and the lines of dropping, like the pathways to drop into the main and the natural are going to be more carefully monitored here by Rain. So we'll have to switch up the strategy. Yuck. So got to change up his mode here. Where is he going to go from this position? Four more lurkers on the way. He's moving through the middle of the map. I'm a little bit shocked to see him not try to take this base. This is so harassable. He's not expanding any further. Rain's going to finish up his third base as tons of lurkers get morphed here in the middle of the map. It seems that... Hyuk wants to hold this lane and this lane and then defend from here. If he's holding this bridge and he pushes up this lane, there's still another lane coming through here that can be attacked. Plus, we can counterattack this direction. There's so many lanes on this map, guys. It's very difficult to say what's the right way to contain or to cover all your bases as a Zerg player, very difficult to get out ahead of the Protoss army as soon as it starts to rotate. Like, he doesn't really have any vision of this, right? He's just kind of sitting back. He's waiting for the Protoss army to move. It could be moving this way. He would have to reinforce this position. It could be coming through here. Well, and then suddenly he sees it coming through the southern route. Oh, we don't have eggs here. Did he just kill those eggs? I think he killed those eggs. The eggs up here. There are eggs right there. And so giving himself a little bit of a quicker path to get towards this middle lane. I guess a uh, bottom middle lane. Making a little bit of a trade here. Nice snipe on one of those dragoons. That's going to make the lurkers a little bit more powerful. The fewer Dragoons there are, the more powerful those Lurkers are going to be. A drop back here with the Lurkers. Looks like it's gotten a few kills, but it will be cleaned up by this one cannon. Might have to picture and picture that as the army pushes forward. He really doesn't want to allow the Templar to get to this spot behind the mineral line where they can start to storm those drones. Meanwhile, I think we're rotating. Oh gosh, this army is stuck going to have to move it pretty quickly, pretty swiftly to help defend these bases. Another base goes up in the bottom left. We're now four base to four base and there is no hive in production. So this is becoming a bad situation for Hyuk. He actually needs to make some moves here if he wants to win this game. He's going to snipe some observers over top of this army, but I think that Rain has plenty of observers available. Jumping down on this base... In bottom left, great storm there though. That storm absolutely wrecking this army. The army trying to get uh, to the southern threshold. Big storm. Good snipes on some of these Templar. These two Templar go down in quick succession. A third Templar is gonna fall. Yuck, has he done it? A big army is moving southward. At the same time, Hydra's coming across this bridge to go ahead and snipe some of these Templar. He does get a couple of them and will get the third as well. I just coming up onto this high ground. He can target down the Nexus. Now the Photon Cannon is unpowered. Army's coming down, but it's not going to be able to get here in time. He will be able to deny this base. An excellent pickup here for Hyuk, but how much is he going to lose as the army comes southward? Is he going to lose every Hydra? Because then there could be a big counterattack opportunity for Rain. Coming over to this base, a lot of lurkers being made over here. Maybe he can sandbag that counterattack. Uh, if it does end up coming. That's a lot of Hydras just kind of tucked into this corner. I don't like the look of that. 
We're going to be losing the majority of these here in a moment as the Templar come down and start to lay out their storms. Good storm there from Rain, dealing a huge amount of damage. You can snipe the Templar, though. These are big kills that are happening while other armies are moving into position. Another hatch in the top right-hand corner. He will be continuing to grow those Corsairs, getting caught. Lurker here, just out in the middle. The upgrades one and two armor. Just 2 0 right now for Hyuk. He's been pretty slow at getting himself into Hive, and I still don't see that Hive on the way. He's planning to just stick with this uh, T2 build. He's not going up into uh, Hive anytime soon. Gonna pull all the drones away from this base. He's lost control over the back of his third or fourth base and that is a big problem right now he's trying to come across this bridge with mass hydra mass hydra is going to get absolutely slammed as it comes across this very tight bridge one more storm is laid down but i think that's about it for the storms another storm in the midst of all of this meanwhile army's coming up from behind going to kill a lot of overlords here if it's allowed to stay so many hydras went down to these storms i think that might be that might be it guys i don't know if you can recover from that that was so much that yuck managed to put together and the storms have just been absolutely brutal oof my goodness as the corpses of the hydras sink into the ground i think the gravity of the situation is slowly sinking in for yuck he is just about at the end of his rope here 49 drones to 49 probes he's managed to defend and keep rain back on just three bases up until this point but rain has a far superior army count but a 30 army supply advantage and well maybe he can get this base online he does need to transfer some of his stuff over there, though. Small group of zealots could easily deny that base, and that would be devastating for him. He's going to get those drones to this base. He hasn't been able to reinforce the bottom left for some time, so eventually these lurkers are going to get picked off. As the lurkers go down, a few dragoons will be traded back, but this is very important that rain takes control of this area get that fourth base online natural is just about mind out main is mind out we can't be on one base for too long the protoss player needs additional bases you have to stay on at least two base mining or things will really start to fall off a cliff beginning to mine out in his main and natural as well but still has a little bit more time on those patches yuck has a lot of hydras over here at the top side is he thinking about a drop into the main there's not really that much defense going on in this main base it almost feels like he's forgotten that he has the ability to drop because simple drops into the main are actually going to be incredibly efficient if you just drop, you know, 12 Hydras on top of this, you can start to kill uh, the Templar Archives and things like that. Oh, this drop over into the third base could be huge. There's so many probes here. Oh my god, that's so much damage. So much damage from these Lurkers. He lost a few Hydras uh, with the Distraction Force that made its way over here to the fourth base but the total saturation at this third was incredibly high made it very very good target for that lurker drop still more hydras and lurkers coming across still no hive here for hyuk playing a very interesting style of just mass hydra mass unit Lots and lots of lurkers on the defensive, but constantly aggressing onto this Protoss player, forcing him to stay on the defensive. We can't leave these bases alone without a good amount of storms to potentially fend off 
masses of lurkers breaking into each of these positions now he's looking for an opportunity here where he can break through but it feels like rain is sewed up tight is it finally time to switch into hive play no yuck says one more drop for the boys he's gonna load up a ton of hydras into these drop ships try to make a distraction down here toward the bottom left and potentially drop this main base i love it drop the main if you drop right here put set up a bunch of lurkers and then just take out the main ho oh, oh ho boy do things ever get dirty from a position like that it certainly would be a sick move here for Hyuk, but looks like Rain's already spotted this coming in. He's seen it on the way, and he's been able to pull back some of his High Templar. There's going to be a lot of storm waiting for these Hydras. Man, that storm in the midst of these gateways was insane. We will snipe down a few Templar with this force, but we won't be getting too much more than that. And the army of Rain is looking fearsome. That army that's sitting out here near the front. If that thing comes, uh, makes its way all the way to the natural, I don't think that Hyuk can stop it. He's got to continue to just push rain in everywhere, make him uh, uncomfortable to the point where he's not willing to move his army across the map. Here comes lurkers and hydras trying to bust into this base down here, but they're getting minced by the storms. Pretty good dodge there. Uh, at the end, it looks like he'll be able to beat the cannons, but the army is making its way forward. At the same time, attacking over here towards this natural, all these hydras are going to be cleared up. And the base will be held for now. But Hyuk is not giving up. He's going to keep on pushing forward, sniping down Templar. There's so much gas at this point for Rain. He's able to pump out huge amounts of Templar. You can just see the number of Templar here. Eight Templar with this mostly dragoon army it's the it's the best combo uh in the game against what we have from yeah just pure dragoon with a smattering of zealots and a lot of templar will beat hydra lurker any day of the week it's perfect perfect combination the only way you force the protoss player to stop building that unit combination is with the defiler and we just haven't seen that tech switch yet still waiting for maybe rain to to start to dry up but yuck is drying up himself he is out of minerals in the main natural and now the third is gone and empty oh coming in for another attack down here in the bottom left he's not gonna make, be able to make it work and he taps out gg yuck gives up in game number one we've still got another one here it's going to be coming right up, guys. Yuck, he's going to be wanting some revenge. You can feel it. He was struggling to make something work on Minstrel. Something that usually requires like a large open space. You want to be able to move your Hydras around and try to surround armies and take fights with Templar. There's just nowhere to take nice open air fights as a zerg player the storms are going to get you basically wherever you go so i'm a little bit surprised to see this specific build employed by hyuk here but let's see if he changes up his strategy in the next one or what map we get jump into game number two rain playing a pretty good control game on minstrel shutting out the layer man style from hyuk the drops just didn't get the damage that they were looking for. And we had some pretty reasonable drops that game. Not the worst in the world. Just the first lurker drop is usually the most impactful in a game like that, right? You want to get in there and hammer the probes hard with like a split lurker drop. One lurker drop into the natural, one lurker drop into the main that just ravages the probe lines and kind of forces an all-in attack from the Protoss in which you can overwhelm them with just pure Hydra and Lurker. Not the case there, though. 
Rain was able to block everything pretty darn well. He reacted very quickly to the secondary drop as well, just shutting that down. And once the drop play has been shut down, there's not a whole lot else going on for the layer player. Yuck just kind of fizzled out in that game, kept on attacking into positions that he knew there were storms at. But without really much of a choice in the matter. Now here on Dominator, opening with the overpool. The pool placement here is going to allow this drone to boost. As you can see, going to be getting a little bit of extra energy there as he bounces off the hatchery. Oh, it doesn't actually work if I guess there's too many drones on that one patch. Let's see. Now that there's only one drone on this patch, let's see if he gets the boost. There it is. He's got the jet boosters. He's got the NOS going. Collecting just a little bit extra minerals on every single return. And Rain will be opening with his gateway expansion. This time looking to put on a little bit of pressure while getting his Nexus out. Not going to be too frisky though with this first sell it. Keeping the probe alive and... Doing a much better job of it than in his last game. Next is going to start up here and all the zealots are back at home. It's all been uh, seen here by the overlord. So seeing three zealots at three minutes, you know that you've got eyes on where all the zealots are. Doesn't need to continue to build lings just yet. Just waiting for a potential move out from rain a little bit later on. He starts Ling speed before any sort of layer, which makes me think he may go all in, but he's continuing to make or he's continuing to mine with drones on the gas. So this could be a Ling speed play into Hydra bust. There's the Hydralis Den. So this is a very particular build. And look, he's even mining only two on gas now because he can throw the third back on that gas now. It's a very particular build that's going to rely on the Protoss player uh, making some assumptions. The Protoss player is going to see a Ling defense with Ling speed. And... What Hyuk is hoping, he assumes, is that this is not going to be a Hydralis bust. With the Lings out here killing off that probe, he hopes that Rain will underprepare for a potential Hydra bust. And that is absolutely a possibility. He's gotten the Stargate. He's going to be pumping out a Corsair here pretty soon. He went Cybernetic Core at the front, which is better than having the Forge at the front uh, for the potential hyd Hydra Bust, but still, this is going to be rough, I think, for Rain. He's just barely going to get the Stargate. He's just going to be finishing up his Corsairs right as the Hydras are making their way over towards that natural. So, you can see here six Hydras coming. Is he going to go for... Well, he could afford range here if he just waits for another 50 minerals. Here's the range going to start. Sometimes you'll just go range, but he actually went speed first. And so his Hydra rallies will be a lot faster. He will not be rallying with Ling. Sometimes you'll just go Hydra range, try to kill the... Okay, he's hiding. He's hiding the Hydra's Gate. There they are. They've been revealed. Another cannon starts up. The second cannon was just a safety cannon. In case there was some sort of Hydralis bust, he could have cancelled if there was not. Now that he sees it, he's going to let that finish. It's just about done. Ling's running forward here. They're going to jump on top of the Zealots. This is a very good positioning here for Hyuk so far. Pushing back the Zealots, killing off the majority of them. Though he hasn't been able to deal any damage to the cannons thus far. He will be going to work on this wall and waiting for more Hydras to rally. 
or Sares on the other side of the map looking for some damage. We are going to leave two to three Hydras back at home. This is completely standard. Three Hydras back at home. We'll be able to defend these, uh, these overlords from the Corsairs. And another hatchery starts. Some drones heading out on the map. I think that's a miss rally. Hopefully he will pick up on that soon. Don't want to leave those over there. That's a lot of wasted mining time. There it is. He will send those back home. Another few more cannons are going to finish up in this natural, but this is a full transition now. A full transition from Hyuk. The only problem being, he did not stop the plus one. So this attack, if you're not going to go completely all in and try to kill, try to bust, then the consolation prize is the wall. And if you're able to kill the wall, you're able to stop the plus one, then your plus one is not going to be that far behind. That's the difficulty of the Hydra bust is... When you're going for a play like this, your own plus one, your own upgrades are going to be very heavily delayed. Of course, your drone saturation will be delayed as well, but you can quickly bump that drone saturation up with those four hatches that were made during the uh, initial bust period. So he is going to have a lot of larva to, to just pump out a huge amount of drones. He's going to get up to 35 and then potentially can start to switch back into hydralis production. But the army of rain going to come running out here. Focus down some of these hydras. Gets the pretty good, pretty good surround here. Unfortunately, Hyuk was not paying attention. It's pretty common for something like this to happen. It's hard to, you know, be throwing down all your buildings, macroing off of all your hatcheries and... Uh, react uh, instantaneously to the zealots as they come running out. They're so fast. They can just get around those uh, hydras and start hitting them before you even get any sort of uh, notification that that's happening. Sixth hatchery on the way. And you can just see plus one is not even halfway complete. And we've already got plus one armor almost halfway or over halfway complete and that's not a good sign we may be two upgrades down for a little bit as the timing attack comes in we don't have anything yuck has nothing on his opponent's side of the map either to see when this move out comes and one of the biggest fears of a zerg player is that you'll miss the move out and the Templar will get all the way across the map with their Zealots. Then they start hitting you in the natural. You just can't kite. You can't do anything. You, you just kind of die. Everything everything will just die. Only two Corsairs and 11 meters are about to pop out. Huge tech switch right now. He was kind of covering this Spire with his Overlords. I, I don't know if Rain was able to spot that. But if he moved out right now, the Mutas would annihilate these... Templar and it could be an easy victory from Yuck, but rain sitting in the natural. He's pretty well covered Let's see how this mutalisk attack goes. He's gonna come right up here into the main Dragoon range is on the way The 11 mutas could dive on top of these Templar at the natural but They may end up all losing their lives. Maybe better to just keep this as a threat while he goes into a fourth base, switches his himself up into hive play. Lurker aspect is on the way by that time. While Rain sits here scared of a big dive from these mutas into the main or onto the Templar. Can really focus on the economy. And getting out a huge amount of hydras to eventually battle this massive protoss force with plus one is done plus two is on the way now plus two armor is a little bit ahead of that though and so we're already up by one upgrade we're gonna be up by two upgrades rain doing very well in this game i, I favor his position honestly because i really don't see 
how he can attack right now. He needs to sit back, macro up, get another hatchery over here, another macro hatch, go into hive, really power on four bases and wait for an opportunity to dive on these Templar. Rain's really not giving it to him and he's actually starting to push across the map already as the third base is coming up. Some Scourge here mixed in with the Mutas. That's quite a lot of Hydra and Lurker, but how many Templar do we have in this army? Four Templar on very high energy. Does not have Kaidaran Amulet just yet, but could actually absolutely afford that upgrade. And there it is. The Amulet is on the way. Two Storms per Templar are available. So we've got eight Storms available. Scourge are going to try to come up. Maybe take a engagement with these Corsairs. There we go. Gets a couple of them. We'll get the Templar as well. Ooh, great storm there, but a good dodge as well. Beetleists still have quite a bit of HP. Can sort of back off, wait a little bit, regain some of that, and come back in a little bit later. Singular Zealot making its way over here to the fourth base, and... He's a bit out of position to deal with that, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. Hopefully it doesn't get a huge amount of kills as the mutas are being microed elsewhere on the map. One drone goes down. Might get this Hydra as well. Pretty annoying stuff, but it is what it is. It's actually going to get a, a few too many kills there. Probably two, three drones. Only on 47 drones total. You want to go up to about 55 on four bases. Hasn't been able to pump that number yet. But is getting a very high number of lurkers. The fourth gas missing is a little bit concerning. We also don't have that hive tech I was talking about earlier. So he is just going to stay on lair once again. Lair man. That's the plan. So got no plans to switch up this tech at all to get into Defiler. I guess he's not a fan. Another hatchery should be coming out here soon, but he's macroing very well on just seven hatcheries. I have to say, keeping his money extremely low. Showing his caliber with the way that he's uh, pumping out these Hydralis at an astounding rate. 83 supply at 14 minutes in the game. M matching rain supply, which means this Hydra Lurker army is actually way bigger. And a lot of those Lurkers are just going to get stormed to death, unfortunately. Coming in from multiple angles, though. Oh, these mutas need to be controlled. Going after the Templar, he gets one, two. Does he get the third Templar? He's not focus firing. That Templar does go down, but all are the, uh, the Hydras go, the mutas go down, but the uh, Templar is out of energy. This is such a wide angle of Hydras coming in from so many different pathways. However, storms are going to be available for the rest of this fight. Still trying to push forward here. Just pure Hydra on Dragoon action. Going to be shoving up onto this high ground. A few uh, Zealots are going to pop out. And maybe that'll be enough to push this back. But uh, the overall Dragoon count has been reduced quite substantially. During this, a fourth base has been grasped by Rain. And I don't think there was enough damage done. Honestly, by Hyuk. I think the idea was pretty good, but he missed the mark with the the Hydras. Or with the Mutas, excuse me. Those Mutalists did not get the kills that they were looking for. He still doesn't have Overlord speed either, by the way. That's kind of crazy. How are we going to get an Overlord up here if uh, the Overlord dies and a DT walks in? That would be pretty tough. Hydra, just pure Hydra fighting on the front line. A lot of the Zealots are going to be picked off. Great storms here on these Hydras. It's going to push everything back. Plus two armor is so good. So, so good. Rain is holding his own. Is holding the position over this high ground. And as long as he holds this spot, I don't think that 
he'll be broken anywhere. The natural is pretty locked down. We've got high ground cannons there. We've got our low ground cannons here with zealots as well. Still no fourth gas, just still pure hydra production. The few lurkers smattered in there. Uh, we don't see another switch up into uh, some mutilus, so we're not going to see big snipes on a whole bunch of these Templar, resulting in a, a nice win or a nice fight from Hyuk. And I think this might be him tapping out, actually. He's just going to let all of his Hydras on this top side die. He's going to dive here towards the fourth base of Rain. However, Rain is going to counterattack and likely pick off this base over at top left. There's not too many drones up in this position. The Hydras will kill the base, but Rain can still mine on one base. He's even got the natural still a little bit of money there to work with. Only going to leave a few zealots <clears throat> over in this top left to try and pick off these hatcheries while sending the rest of the army back home to defend. Being very careful with how he spends his resources. Rain is playing an excellent game and GG is called. Hyun will tap out an interesting play style from Hyun. Sticking with Hydra and Lurker through to the end. He never switched it up. That was a pretty impressive spread in the mid game though, or that, that one massive fight that we saw was pretty cool. Like he had so many hydras. I just want to go back to the very beginning of that fight so that we can take a look at how much stuff really was available. Uh, to Hyun at that moment. So let's see. Here's the beginning of this engagement right before the Mutas flew in. How many Hydras do we have? We've got 171 supply. That is so much. Look at all the Hydras and Defilers coming, or Hydras and Lurkers coming down. You know, I almost feel like if the Mutas had gone to the rally point instead of jumping on this army, and he had waited for this army to come down. So if this army had been sent to here, the Mutas come in and kill these Templar. And then as the army is retreating, you can send in the Mutas to their death and just kill whatever Templar you can on the main army. Maybe he could have taken this fight. But honestly, these Mutas were not controlled very well. He was dealing with a lot at this moment. He's controlling so many Hydras right now. It's kind of ridiculous. Look at all the Lurkers just running in and dying as well. I think we lost two or three Lurkers uh, just being sent in. And then these Templar were able to come up and turn this fight. That's a pretty good fight with just pure Hydras with a couple of Lurkers uh, bashing away at the Zealots that are pushing forward. He also accidentally burrowed, burrowed a bunch of Lurkers back here. Imagine if these five Lurkers were on top of this pizza slice. So a little bit of a mistake with Hyuk in this fight. He could have potentially taken this, uh, at least this fight. Maybe not the game per se. Maybe he couldn't have uh, completely won this off of the attack. But if he had wiped out this whole army... Maybe he would have had opportunities to break some of these bases and make this game really scrappy uh, so that there was a, a potential to end up winning. But the fact that he had all of these lurkers on a control group and they all burrowed way out of range of the fight, it's like having, it's like having, you know, six of your tanks, not quite as impactful, but, you know, five, six tanks in the back. Uh, not part of the fight against a Protoss player. You need these units as part of this fight. Look at all the army just getting stuck going through this little tiny choke. Lurkers running into their death. These ones really needed to be burrowed right along here. Uh, on, on this high ground even would have been better. But just burrowed uh, around this area would have been fine. He's controlling the mutas, of course. It's, it's understandable. Um... But the Mutas didn't even do that great of a job. I think they killed two Templar. And they didn't get the third one. 
these lurkers are gonna burrow let's see exactly when these lurkers burrow yeah right there so he must have had a hotkey um must have had some of these lurkers on a hotkey and he was just going through trying to get the lurkers to burrow here at the front and he ended up burrowing only one lurker within range of anything <laughs> so this is this is rough this is a rough loss these are things that need to be worked on before he can become a real contender uh, in the largest tournaments in the world an ASL or a KCM or what have you he's an extremely good Zerg ladder player but there are definitely some some hiccups in this game some control issues that need to be dealt with and Rain played pretty decent he just kind of controlled the game he just sat back he didn't take any unnecessary risks he moved his army very deliberately he made sure that he had his or he was close to his rallies that he wouldn't get surrounded by something like this he paid attention to the tech switches he played correctly when it comes to a layer based player like this someone who just wants to overwhelm you with hydras well you got to keep your templar alive you got to make sure to expand slowly you don't want to get over eager and and be, get overwhelmed you have to have masses of units you got to get your production fully online and keep producing. You want to have a high supply. You can see his supply is still so high at 182. Remember, these two were equal in supply just seconds ago. 182, that dropped to 137 very, very quickly. And it will drop even further as this fight goes on. Trying to control these Hydras at the front, but still forgetting about the Lurkers here critically at the the backside of this fight hitting a macro around during this attack as you can see he's got all of his larva rolling right now but he doesn't have the forces in the fight where they need to be kind of a macro beast but maybe not the, the control not the greatest in these fights eating a lot more damage from some of these storms than maybe he could have pretty decent diving forward here with the hydras but once again what if those lurkers were sitting here on this high ground what would have happened to the dragoons as they were trying to retreat what would have happened to those templar as they were trying to reinforce this could have been a one game it wasn't rain manages to take this series to zero guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this match we'll be watching out for more rain and games in the future so make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.